ultra processed food plus protein is a winning combination. What's up guys, back with another educational video. And this week we are talking about a high protein diet, but a high protein diet in combination with consuming a lot of ultra processed foods. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below the algorithm. A new interesting study came out looking at eating high amounts of ultra processed foods, like, like around, I think, 50% or more of calories from ultra processed foods, but either as a normal protein amount or a high protein amount. So researchers were comparing both diets being ultra processed, very high in ultra processed foods, but either a normal protein diet of 13% protein or a diet of 30% protein. They wanted to see what would happen with how much these individuals ate, what happened with their energy expenditure, what happened with energy balance. Now they did this over a couple of days and they had them in a whole room collimeter, meaning they could measure their energy expenditure over 24 hours. Interestingly, what they found, like many studies on protein, they did find an increase in energy expenditure. Both groups ate over their calorie maintenance. They both increased their caloric intake. And we know this about ultra processed foods. Kevin Hall did a study years ago where he took people from a minimally processed diet to a mostly ultra processed diet and people spontaneously increased their caloric intake by 500 calories like overnight. So we know if you switch to an ultra processed diet, you will increase your calorie intake because the food is more energy dense. Basically more calories per gram of food. But in this study, even though both groups over eight, the ultra processed high protein diet over ate less. So they ate 196 calories less per day than the group eating the normal protein, highly processed diet. In addition, the high protein ultra processed diet had an increase in energy expenditure of about 128 calories per day compared to the normal protein diet. And both groups, again, were eating over maintenance, but the energy balance difference was the normal protein diet was eating 32% over their maintenance, whereas the high protein diet over ate by 17%. Now, they also did some really cool breakdowns about eating rate. They found that the people eating the normal protein diet ate at a faster rate. They also found that the high protein diet had more chews per bite. They ate slower. They seemed to have a slower rate of gastric emptying. And these are some things that are known about protein. It seems that consistent with other literature, high protein does increase energy expenditure and it increases satiety. But... If you're eating all your food from ultra processed foods, you're still going to overeat. Now, what's interesting is the high protein group had a positive or more positive protein balance compared to the normal protein group. The normal protein group was right at protein balance, meaning the amount of protein that was being utilized versus being oxidized was about the same or equivalent. Whereas the high protein diet, their protein balance was quite positive. Now, when it came to fat balance, the amount of fat you store versus the amount of fat you burn, they found that the normal protein group was in a positive fat balance. But the high protein group was actually slightly negative in fat balance. Again, these are short-term studies. It's very difficult to extrapolate out what would happen body composition-wise. But based on this data, it suggests there could be some sort of body recompositioning effect happening where you're getting some more lean tissue, you're losing some fat tissue, even though you're eating in a calorie surplus, that the high protein intake is preferentially, for lack of a better term, directing calories towards lean tissue versus fat tissue. But again, this is only a couple of days. It's impossible to extrapolate that out. And controlled feeding studies in metabolic wards aren't necessarily broadly applicable to the general population. But we do know that there are some studies showing body recomposition effects with higher protein diets. There are also studies showing increased energy expenditure with high protein diets, and there also are studies showing decreased energy intake with high protein diets. And what's interesting is the high protein group, even though it was lower in carbohydrate, so by increasing protein by 17% with the normal protein group versus the high protein group, they just correspondingly decreased the carbohydrate amount. The high protein group actually had higher overall insulin, which again, for those insulin haters in the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity, what ha ha happened? was insulin doesn't really matter one way or another for fat loss, it's energy balance. But anywho, what this study suggests 
is it's a bad idea to eat a highly ultra processed diet because you overconsume food. But even in the context of a highly processed or ultra processed diet, high protein still seems to have an advantage for thermogenesis, for satiety, and possibly for body composition. If you're gonna eat a minimally processed diet, high protein seems to be a good idea. If you are going to eat an ultra processed diet, high protein still seems like a good idea. So it is a win, freaking win for protein, which is why I have been saying for the last 20 years, high protein rocks for body composition and metabolic health. And this even applies in the context of ultra processed foods. Again, I'm an investor in David Protein Bars and those are would be considered a processed food, obviously. I will never say this is better than eating, I don't know, chicken breast and some vegetables. I'm never gonna say that. But is somebody grabbing a David protein bar better than grabbing a Snickers bar? You bet your ass it is. And so we have to live in the real world. We cannot live in La La Land where ultra processed foods never existed and we don't have to worry about them. I know personally, I eat about two David protein bars a day, mostly out of convenience because typically getting high protein sources in is a time consuming thing. I'm either having to cook eggs or I am making chicken breasts or I am even heating up like a frozen meal like I like to do, like these uh, power bowls I get, which are higher-ish protein and high fiber. I like those, still takes me four or five minutes and when you're busy, you don't always have that time. Sometimes I'm running kids out the door and then I'm running in the door to film content and then I'm running back out the door to pick up kids. And so a lot of times I don't have time to even throw something in the microwave. And so having a protein bar like a David bar is a great option for somebody like me who I otherwise wouldn't get that protein in or it would take a significant chunk out of my day to try to get protein from whole food sources. So again, not saying it's better than whole food sources, it is not, but it is a great option for people who are busy or who maybe don't like the way certain protein sources taste and that's their way to get it in. If you guys are interested in David Protein, you can check them out at David Protein. Again, I am an investor, so I do have a dog in this race, but I invested in it because I believe in the product. It is the highest protein per calorie bar on the market and I think they taste really good. So of course, I'm a big fan. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the study breakdown and I will catch you next week.